Hi and welcome back to Podcast School. This is a video podcast. Um, we're looking today at electronic components, in particular the resistor. Uh, this is for anyone studying AS technology and design and we're looking at the CS syllabus and this is from the revised, the new revised uh, syllabus unit 1.16. Okay, so straight away then, uh, let's have a look on what we actually mean by resistors. Now, obviously you've come across resistors before at GCSE or, or, or perhaps in science, um, but we really now must make sure that we know exactly what's going on and everything about them, especially uh, because our project work uh, will be so dependent upon it. Okay, so I've got a definition here. Anywhere that you see this little dictionary means it's a definition. And I've said here, a resistor is a two-terminal electrical or electronic component that opposes an electric current by producing a voltage drop between its terminals in accordance with Ohm's law. And we'll be looking at Ohm's law in just a second, but you should have remembered that as well from, from previous years. Okay. The electrical resistance is equal to the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the current through the resistor while the temperature remains constant. Now, that, that little paragraph just is Ohm's law. There's, there's nothing new there. All we're saying is that the resistance is equal to the voltage drop. In other words, it's, it's all proportional to the voltage drop across uh, the resistor. Okay, but the important thing is, and I've highlighted that in red, that the temperature remains constant. Why the temperature remains constant, sorry. Okay, so you can't, um, you know, expect a different voltage drop across a resistor at different temperatures. It's all at the one temperature. Uh, resistors are used as a part of electrical networks and electronic circuits. That's easy. Okay, now let's have a look at this resistor. I've added in um, the symbol for a uh, another resistor here and for a battery. Okay, remember the the long side of the symbol is always the plus, and I always remember that because it takes more lines to make a plus. Okay, so this is the positive side, this is the negative side, and whilst we're in that, uh, whilst we have those things connected, obviously there's going to be a current, and remember, a current is denoted by I. So there's current going to be flowing around this very, very simple circuits, the simplest of all circuits. And because of Ohm's law, we know that there's going to be a voltage drop across the resistor. Okay, and remember, you can state Ohm's law simply just by uh, using the triangle. Okay, so V on top equals I times R in here. In other words, uh, voltage equals current times resistance. And we know that we can rearrange that in order to make um, the, the subject of the equation different term into a different term all right so if we wanted what r was for example if we wanted to work out what r was we would simply divide the voltage drop by the current flowing through it now let's have a look at this circuit i've asked a question here what is the voltage v and the current i read by the voltmeter and the ammeter in this case remember this is the symbol for a voltmeter, very simple, and this one for the ammeter. Okay, I've put a plus and a minus in there, but really I shouldn't have done because you, you don't need to, uh, you can connect an ammeter uh, either way round, there's no positive or negative, so ignore those two for, for now, okay? Um, so what? how would we do this then? How would we work out what the current was? Sure, yeah, you just all you gotta do in this case is make I the subject of the equation. So I equals V over R. So in this case, um, we're looking at V and V is nine. And remember R isn't two, and that's that's a mistake that you should definitely should not make at this at this point. R is two thousand, and you know that by the K. So it's nine divided by two thousand, and that will give you zero point zero zero four five or 4.5 microamps. Okay, now I've also asked what is the voltage V and that's really a trick question. There's no voltage drop across the ammeter. It's, we think of it as being a perfect device with no resistance and, and in reality it will have but um, we think of it as having no resistance. Therefore we can say right away that the voltage um, across the, the um, resistor here must be the same as that provided by the battery. In other words, it's nine. Now, if you really wanted to work that out, all you would do is you would make 
uh, v, the subject of the equation again, and you know that v equals ir, you've already worked out i as being uh, 4.5 microamps, and then what you would do is multiply it back up by 2000 and get 9 again. Okay, that would be sort of a, a very um, belts and braces answer, but uh, really you can just say that it is 9 volts, that is. Okay, now very quickly we're going to look just now at resistor color codes. Um, again, you'll have done this before, so we'll not labor the fact that when you want to work out a, a color code for a resistor, you take the first two uh, colors. So in this, the example given here is 680 uh, ohms. 680 ohms would be denoted by 6, which is blue, 8, which is gray. So you just read that off, 6, 8. And then the third one's slightly different. It's the multiplication um, band. So because what we've got here is brown, so we're saying that this case brown is times 10. So what we have is 68 times 10 is 680. And of course you remember that the fourth band is the tolerance band. Okay, so really a quick example. Say we had uh, a resistor with, let's say, I don't know, red, yellow, red? What would that be? Well, red is 2, yellow is 4, and then we multiply it by um, red again. So it's 24 times, well, I said red, I meant 100. So it's 24 times 100. So what's that? That's uh, 2,400 or 2.4 kilo ohms. Okay. Now, there's such a thing as five band resistors. And I've shown some five band resistor, I've shown a five band resistor uh, chart here. And really, all it is is to, what the extra band does is denote an extra, um, an extra significant figure. Okay, so it's just exactly the same as before. You've got the first band and the second band, which you read, but this time you also read in a third number. So say it were, just for example, red, 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 then you say it's 222 two, two times, and then it's times the fourth one. So really, the third band is the extra band in here, and then the fifth one becomes the tolerance. Okay, so just so we're, we're absolutely clear, the resistor symbol is just the rectangle, and uh, the variable resistor is that with, uh, same as that with an arrow on it. And sometimes you see that with an arrow right through it. You see, you see both of those, okay? Um, in fact, this would really be the symbol for a potentiometer, which really is the same thing. But, you know, think of this, when you see this one or the, the arrow right through it, both are variable resistors or potentiometers. Okay, now we have something called the E12 series, and this is mentioned in the in this uh, CA syllabus. Um, I'll, I'll just rattle down through this so you can read it for yourself. And by the way, if any of this you can't see so well from the video, remember that all the notes for the for all the video podcasts are given in the uh, in the feed. Okay, they're a PDF. So if you're having any trouble reading any of these, you don't need to have just get the PDF and print it or follow along or whatever you want to do, but make sure you get the, P the, the PDF, okay? So I'll not read everything um, as I go through. That would really be a waste of time. But what I will say is for the E12 series, um, that those values uh, is what you've given, what you've been given. There's one, 1 1.2, all the way through. I'll not read them right out, right down to 10, okay? And that is the E12 series. But you might ask, why? what is... The significance of these uh, values. Why 1.8 and why 3.3? But if you look carefully, as you go down the way, the uh, the gap between them actually gets more. Here we've got 0.2 is the difference between 1 and 1 1.2. Uh, the next one, 1 1.2 and 1 1.3, well the gaps widen to 0.3 now. Uh, sorry, 1.2 to 1.5, did I say? Uh, let's go right down here. 3.3 .3 to 3.9. Well, the gap this time is obviously 0.6. So as you, can, as you can see, right down here, 8.2 to 10 is 1.8 of a gap. So in other words, there's the, the as you go through here, the gap between the one and the next one is more. And there's a good reason for that. That's so that the, the percentage, um, say you 
say you had to pick a value somewhere, I don't know, like 5.3, say, then obviously you're going to have to go to the nearest one, which would be 5.6. Now there's going to be a slight um, variation in what you needed and what you've actually got. It's all to do with fractional error, okay? Could you imagine if there was a 0.3 of a gap uh, up around 1.0? Well, 0.3 as a fraction of 1.0 is quite significant, whereas down here it's not so okay so it's all to do with having the uh, constant fractional error read the text there that'll explain it a little bit better okay so resistor power ratings then the power rating of resistor is the maximum power it can safely safely dissipate without being damaged by overheating is what I've said there we've also got um, another triangle and you know by now that this means that there's an equation involved P, in this case, the, the power equals voltage times current, okay? P equals V times I, okay? And if you remember, V also equals IR. So it can do, we can do a bit of substitution here. So if we were to now plug this value, V, which is I times R, into this equation, can you think of what we might get as a, as a uh, function of P? It would be P equals, and then in brackets, I times R times I. So that's going to equal P equals I squared R. All right, and we can do that one more time. Uh, this time we'll substitute in the value for, let's see, we've already got, um, we've already got rid of uh, the V. So let's do it for I. So I equals V over R. So plug that into the equation and, yeah, you got it. We get P equals V squared over R. Okay, so here's a question for you. If the power rating of a certain 15 kilo ohm resistor is 5 watts, what is the maximum current it can carry without damage? So what have we got here? We've got the value of a resistor and we've got the power rating. Okay, and we need to know what the current is. This is easy. We just need to find out what I is. So I squared equals P divided by R. So I, therefore, is the square root of that. And if we plug the values in, we're told that uh, P is 5 and R is 15K, 15,000. So that's the square root of 1 over 3,000. And the answer is 0 0.0185 amps. Okay, easy. Another one. What is the greatest allowable potential difference across the terminals of the resistor in question one? Okay, this time we're going to use P equals V squared over R. So V squared is P times R, naturally enough. So V therefore is the square root of P times R. Now let's plug in the values that we have. From before, we knew that P was 5 and R was 15,000. So this time, the uh, maximum voltage that this thing can take, this resistor can take, is around 274 volts. Quite a lot. Another one. If a 9 kilo ohm resistor is to be connected across a 120 volt potential difference, what power rating is required for that resistor? So we've got values for R, and we've also got values for uh, voltage, V. So it makes sense to use this equation, P equals V squared over R. All right, so let's plug in our values. 100 V is 120, so we've got to square that. Times, or sorry, divided by 9,000, because it's a 9 kilo ohm resistor, remember? And that gives us a value of 1.6 watts and it's important that you always always remember your units never ever write 1.6 it's always 1.6 watts okay so those are three questions just to test your your um, understanding there all right again another um, simple uh, thing or fact that you must know is the fact that if you put a lot of resistors in series then you just add up the value of the of the resistors. So the R total is the value of R1 plus R2 plus R. I've written Rn, and that just means you know you keep on going to the last one. All right, parallel then. We've got a, an equation here. One over the total, so the entire resistance between the two uh, two terminals here and here. So the total resistance 
you can is it governed by this equation. 1 over r total equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. And remember, that would be plus 1 over rn, depending on the many you had. Now, that's not very useful for us. We would like a value uh, or an equation that gave us r total straight away without having to do the, re the reciprocal of it at the end. So let's have a look. How could we um, rearrange this? Well, let's see. We could multiply all three terms by r total times r1 times r2. Yeah, and that's what I've done there. That gives you that. Now, you can see straight away that some terms will cancel. R total will cancel there. R1 will cancel there. And R2 will cancel there. Okay, so we get this. And now you know what to do. You've got R total, R total. So R1 times R2 equals R total. And you can take that out in brackets, you see. R2 plus R1. And then all you got to do is divide that. Uh, so R total, therefore, will equal R1 times r2, divide it by r1 plus r2. And remember, if there were 3, then it would be r1 times r2 times r3, divided by r1 plus r, oh, that should say 2, shouldn't it? r2 plus r3. Okay, so there's a little mistake there. That should be a 2. All right, and just to finish off, we're going to have a look at just how uh, resistors can be uh, bought today. There's two basic types. There's one called through hole, which is the type we're most familiar with in school. Those are the types with the little lead that you, you know, you drill and you push the end of the resistor down through and you solder from the back side. That's called through hole because it has to go through a hole naturally enough. And surface mount. Okay. And there's a picture. Oh no, it's not. That's not. That's through hole again. Surface mount are the ones with the that just solder directly on. There's no leads for it. Okay, and you'll see another, I'll, I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Okay, so there you go. There are, uh, there are some, let's see, there you go. There's some surface mount resistors there. Okay, notice, um, by the way, there's no resistor color codes on here. This always um, bewildered me why that, you know, in the through hole that you always had to have uh, resistor color codes, whereas when you get to surface mount, you just write the value on. Seems a bit more sensible. Anyway, uh, I've said that the surface mount resistors are much more preferred in industry because they're smaller for one thing and they don't penetrate the board. And that makes multi-layered boards much, much easier to root because you don't have a huge whopping uh, leg going through right through your board, which you have to root around. Okay, it doesn't penetrate the board, so multi-layer boards are much, much easier to root. Okay, and there's some, uh, there's another picture of some surface mount, and you had one somewhere. Okay, I just, uh, I put these in just large so that you can see them. If you're watching the video feed, um, this, these will be easier to see. So there's some surface mount, sorry, some through hole. These are capacitors, these guys here. This is just a, uh, a holder for an IC, an integrated circuit. Notice the, the, the copper tracking here. Okay, this could be a, um, a multi-layered board. Who's to say there could be m more layers to this? But probably not. Uh, there's resistors, the way they would be delivered to uh, an industry. Again, some surface mounts. And some more surface mounts. Okay, this is, these are really magnified now, so you can get the, you can see how... Uh, how tiny these really are. Notice this one's missing for some reason. Okay. And the last one. Just pushed into two solder blobs either way. And notice how the tracks are actually going underneath this resistor. Again, over here with the capacitor. Um, you see that quite a lot. Some really clever things done with uh, routing these days and some very, very good software that does all this automatically. Okay, so this is the last thing we're going to look at. It's the voltage divider. And again, you'd have seen this before. Okay, I'll leave you to read the, uh, the uh, definition here. But basically, what a voltage divider does is, is exactly what it says it does. It divides voltage by this equation. V out equals V in times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, now let's go straight to a question. What happens if one of the resistors in the voltage divider is replaced by an LDR? Well, well let's have a look. We've got our equation as, as before. 
So we can, if we say that R1 is the top one, obviously, and R2 is the LDR, what's going to happen here? Yeah, I've written as the light level decreases, the resistance of the LDR increases. And that's always an important thing to remember. Uh, remember that as, as the light level falls, as it gets dark, resistance of an LDR gets larger. Therefore, according to the above equation, V out will also tend to V in. In other words, as R2 gets larger and larger and larger, R1 becomes less significant. And this whole bracket almost tends to 1. So 1 times V in is going to, and V in is, is 9 or whatever there is the battery is, V out will also tend toward that. Okay, so in other words, as R2 gets bigger, V out gets bigger until it almost becomes VN. Okay, another question. Question 5. In the circuit below R1 is 10 kilo ohms and an LDR is used as R2. Suppose that the LDR has a resistance of 500 ohms in bright light and 200 ohms in the shade. Find V out in bright light. I've written bright light. In bright light. Okay, again, put down your equation. Always, first thing you do, put the equation down. That's the easiest thing to do. And then all you got to do is plug in your values. Okay, and the values are there for you. And the answer comes out at 0.43 volts. Another one, in the circuit below, R1 is 10K, and the LDR is used as R2. Suppose that the LDR has a resistance of 500 ohms in bright light. Okay, so there you go. As the light increases, the uh, level of resistance decreases. And 200 kilo ohms in the shade, find V out in the shade. Again, put down your equation that you know, put in your values, and out pops the answer, 8.57. Okay, explain the operation of this circuit. Well, that's easy as well. It's the given by the equation again, okay? Same thing, only this time R1 is the resistor. All right, so I've written as the light level decreases, the resistance of the LDR increases. Therefore, according to the above equation, V out will also tend to ground. So in other words, as it gets less, or less light or more dark, the uh, V out tends to become ground. Lastly then, uh, we talked earlier about the potentiometer. You can use a potentiometer as a voltage divider as I've, sh as I've shown you here. Uh, you just use one of the legs of the potentiometer as the, out as the V out point. All right, so as you move this up and down, it's basically like taking, say we move it up, it's like taking R1 down a little bit and R2 up a little bit and vice versa. Okay, so you can use a potentiometer as a uh, voltage divider. Okay, so the way it works is you've got some conductive material round here. And this wiper wipes between uh, right round uh, from here, right round to here. Okay, and that will obviously change the value of the resistance. So if it were right round, if we were right round here, then there's going to be a larger resistance between here and here than there would be if this were down here. Okay, so to have a think about that, um, this is conductive material, remember. The only one problem is this is a bit um, confusing. It doesn't go all the, the black shouldn't go all the way around. It should be uh, just from here right round to here. Otherwise, it would just be a circle and this wouldn't matter at all, would it? Okay, so these are the uh, some of the um, places that I got some information when I was looking at this stuff. Uh, lots of Wikipedia sites, uh, one from Technology Student, another one from Seattle Robotics, which is quite an interesting one. I'll put these on the feed and uh, you can go directly to them without having to type these out. Okay, so that's loads for today. Um, if you have any questions, remember you can always email me. It's info at podcastschool.net. And, uh, you know, just have a look through the, the notes as well. Make sure you got those off the feed. And also remember that you can, as I said, click on these, um, these references. Okay, so until next time then, bye-bye.